Let's continue with query strategies. Often we see our users using one query to feed all report objects in their report. And the reason they do this is in the hopes of sending down one query to the database and then using that data set to populate all of the report objects. But what they don't realize is that each of these containers may have a different set of query items in them, different calculations, different groupings, and even different aggregation. And because of this, we need to send down separate queries in order to retrieve the appropriate data to satisfy those query objects or report objects. One way around this, however, is to use what we call a feeder query or a subquery and enable the use of the local cache. And we'll show this in the following demo. And using this technique, you may need to adjust the aggregate properties for the fact query items in the child queries. This technique applies to interactive HTML reports. However, if you wish to employ the same technique with batch query mode, in other words, running the reports in the background and speeding up that process, you'll need to change the CQE config.xml file and add the following entry into it. Let's take a look in Report Studio at how we can implement this feeder query technique. So here we have a report that has a list object and a chart object. And both these objects are based off of a query called query base, as can be seen here. And the intent by the report author is to send down one query to the data source and then populate these two objects with the results from that one query. However, this query has a different projection list than the chart query does. Product line, year, and revenue versus year, quarter, order method, and quantity. So different projection lists, different groupings. Now the technique that I'm going to show you in a moment applies to the first run when local cache is being used. So if it's engaged in the model or engaged in the report itself, this technique is beneficial only on the first run of the report for your connection. However, there are cases where you may want to have fresh data for each query of the report. So every time the report is run, you're always going against the data source. In that case, this technique is also highly beneficial in that it should help speed up the query times. Rather than sending down multiple queries, you're just sending down one query. Okay, so let's run this report. And once the data is returned, we're going to go take a look at this handy little tool called db2monitor and see how many queries were sent down to the database. And in this case, I can see that two queries were sent down, one for the chart and one for the list. So two completely separate queries go down to the data source. Now what I'm going to do is pause the video and reset my environment, so recycle my Cognos BI service as well as my database and then I'll run this test again after implementing the technique. Okay, so I've reset my environment and what I'm going to do now is apply a base query or what we call a feeder query to other queries. So what I'll do is I'll create one query for my list report and one query for my chart report and of course name them accordingly so we know what we're dealing with. And then what we're going to do is drag query base to the right of query list and this is now a feeder query to this query. And we'll do the same thing for the chart query. Now we double click query list and you can see that the objects that we can select now are based off of query base. So for this particular query for the list we'll take product line and year as well as revenue and for the chart we'll take year, quarter, order method, and quantity and drag that onto the list. And further to that we now also have the option to retrieve this data set once from the database and then apply filters to it locally if it makes sense. So in this case we can have the chart report based off of the years 2010 and 2011 and we can go to the list query and do the same filter 
except for different years altogether. In this case we'll do 2012 and 2013. Now we go back to the page and we select the objects and we then point them to their corresponding queries. So in this case query list for the list report and we'll point the chart report to query chart. And we'll now run the report. So the results return fairly quickly and what we can do is take a look at our monitoring tool and we'll see that indeed only one select statement was sent down to the database. So it selects all the items in the projection list from the base query, retrieves it, and then brings back that data set which is then filtered locally for the different years for the different report objects that we have on our report. And as said in the slide uh, previously, you'll note that there may be instances where you have to come in and change the aggregate function for your measures. So the base query would have been set to total, but here it's set to automatic. So in this case I can set revenue to total, and the same for quantity. And so this technique shows you how you can send down one query to the database to populate multiple objects on your report. However, when implementing this technique and applying filters or calculations, you'll want to make sure that it makes sense to do so in sending one larger query down to the data source. For example, if you're going to send down one large query that brings back millions upon millions of rows only to filter them down to 20 rows for one object and 35 rows for another object, it doesn't make sense to send that large query down. It would make more sense to send two independent queries that are highly filtered as opposed to the one large query. In this next demo, we'll take a look at how to identify and fix split MDX for dimensional queries. As is with relational queries, split MDX sends multiple queries down to the data source, which is not as efficient as sending down one query. And this split MDX can occur when we break a hierarchy or a measure dimension in the report layout. Let's take a look in Report Studio. So the issue that we're going to take a look at in Troubleshoot in this particular scenario applies to compatible query mode for relational data sources as well as power cubes. In dynamic query mode we've seen different results where this particular issue does not present itself. So in this case we have a cross tab with year on the columns followed by quarter and nest under that revenue and then sales target which rolls up directly to the year level and then product line on the rows and dividing sales targets and revenue is a crosstab spacer. So we'll just quickly run this report to see what the output looks like. As can be seen here we have years followed by quarters with the revenue values and then the sales targets rolling up to the year itself. Now users of the report have complained of performance issues so what we'll do is we'll quickly take a look and see what the generated MDX is. And as we look at this generated MDX, we quickly notice that there are three MDX statements. So this is known as split MDX, three separate statements being sent down to the data source and then combined locally on the Cognos BI servers. So to troubleshoot this, we'll start to take the items away and continually look at the generated MDX. So I've removed the spacer, the crosstab spacer. We'll take a look at the generated MDX and see that we're now down to two MDX statements. So we're making some progress. Then we will take sales target out of the picture because that's breaking the measure dimension. And then we'll take a look and see that we now have one MDX statement. So we've identified the offending objects on the report that are causing this issue. So the question is how do we get around it? So in this particular case to keep the second measure for sales target at the same level that we had revenue at, what we'll do is we'll actually bring in year twice and place year again above the sales target object. 
and we can format a report to essentially hide this or to display it it's it's completely up to uh, the author and the end user requirements now if we look at the generated SQL we'll see that we still have one MDX statement going down to the data source so again we're in good shape now the other item was that we want to have a spacer cell here that would separate these objects and what we can do for this particular scenario is create a new query calculation and in this case we'll create a new measure and we'll just call this space and this will have nothing in it we'll just put null in for the expression and then we can format this so the first thing we'll do is just remove the default classes that are associated to these objects and then we can assign a different background color in this case we'll make it blue and again formatting can take care of most of these issues in the interest of time we'll just run this report now and see that we have essentially the same results but this time without all the split MDX so we still have one MDX statement going down to the data source as we saw with project governors in the framework manager section in report studio there are query hint properties that may help to increase performance again as we stated in the framework manager section this is the type of thing you'll want to look at after investigating all other avenues i.e. SQL generation etc and if everything appears to be proper then you may want to investigate some of these properties to see if switching them will increase the performance for your report most of these properties that you see here are actually the project governors that you can set in framework manager but you can override here in report studio however in the other studios you cannot override the project governor settings for report troubleshooting for performance issues the first thing you'll want to do is to break apart the report until you find the performance offender in other words removing the white noise once you have that you'll want to examine SQL to verify the join paths the cardinality make sure there's nothing that looks odd you'll also want to check for local processing by looking for differences in the native SQL versus the Cognos SQL the same as we discussed in the framework manager section and the same applies for looking for split SQL to make sure that we're not going across multiple data sources also if you see squiggly brackets or double squiggly brackets in the SQL that's a great indicator that the modeler has handwritten SQL in the model and set it to either native SQL or pass through SQL and either of these will bypass our cache and the Cognos SQL optimizer and not only that it will also create extra metadata calls at runtime because we don't have cached metadata for this particular query subject and again as we just saw earlier for dimensional queries you will want to look for split MDX now when troubleshooting the SQL or MDX in your report you saw in the previous demos that the tools menu offers the show generated SQL slash MDX option and this tool is an excellent starting point to better understand what's happening at the report level the model level or even the data source level And beyond that for each individual query in report studio there is a generated SQL property that allows you to view the tabular SQL now this is not the same SQL that is used when the report is run however viewing this SQL and the data that is returned by this SQL may help you better understand the data that you're working with if you're using dynamic query mode dynamic query analyzer is another tool that is great for troubleshooting your reports it can allow you to view timings for the different execution nodes within dynamic query mode and allows you to view either the SQL or MDX for the queries we're not going to go into any detail for dynamic query analyzer but did want to make you aware of this tool and how it can be of benefit to you when using dynamic query mode